morning, everyone. Welcome to Glen Arbor. Those who are in the Fellowship Hall, come on in and join us. We're continuing our series on what, uh, how did Jesus love his neighbor? And uh, today is on listening. In fact, specifically dynamic listening. And so you're going to be, you're actually going to practice it today, how to listen in a dynamic way. So you're wondering, what could that be? Well, you have to wait till after the music to find that out. So let's pray and ask the Lord to speak to our hearts and that he be worshipped this morning. Lord, we do lift you up above all. You are the one to be worshipped today. Um, we, uh, in unity, uh, lift your name above all names. And uh, we ask that as we uh, in, just look at this subject of loving our neighbor, that you would speak to our hearts. Maybe there's a neighbor or someone we know at work or at school or on our block or uh, nearby, someone we know that we should be talking to or listening to, that we should engage with, that we should uh, interface with, that you want to use us to be Jesus to them. And I ask that you would bring that person to mind or persons and uh, uh, use us even this week to um, lead them to yourself. We thank you again for this time as we look to you in your name. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Our fearless leader is out of town this week, so I'm pinch hitting. Um, this morning, as Greg said, we're going to continue in our series on being others oriented. And I know I've really appreciated just the reminder of kind of the core of our beliefs as a church that we are to be looking for, out for others and being ready to share whatever the Lord puts on our heart to do. Um, but it's easy, for me at least, to hear what they share and just go, okay, I've got to do this. But just kind of take on that mantle. And the Lord reminded me this morning that he's the one doing the work. And he invites us to join him in that as he works to build his kingdom. So the songs that we're going to sing this morning are kind of along that theme. I just invite you to stand and join us.
Give us today our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom forever. hurt others, we've been hurt ourselves as we've tried to love people the way the Lord would have us to do. And the next couple of songs uh, that we're going to sing are verses right out of scripture, and they're really promises from the Lord that we can trust him to be there, to encourage us, and to keep us going as we try to follow him. Over 
warrior who saves. He will exalt over you with joy. He will renew you in his love. He will rejoice over you with shouts of We have a reading this morning from Luke, Luke 10, 38 through 42. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teachings. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. Mary has chosen the good position, which will not be taken away from her. Thank you, Pastor. As we get ready for announcements this morning, please turn and take a few minutes and greet each other in the Lord.
up. Good. Test, test. Hello. Test, test. Test, test. Good morning. You uh, can work your way back to your seat. That'd be great. So I had uh, just a few announcements. I actually had more than a few. Some of these were in your bulletin, if you uh, don't recall them after. Um, we, are having a, we are having a ladies' night out. The ladies in our church have organized a meeting uh, just to hang out and have some fellowship time together uh, this Saturday at 5.30 p.m. at the Hummingbird Restaurant in Winfield. Uh, if you haven't been there before, it's the, at the corner of Geneva and County Farm Road. If you want more information or location, you can talk with Linda or Robin here uh, if you'd like to stop by and just spend a little time together. So that's Saturday, 5.30 at the Hummingbird Restaurant. A um, few other announcements on events that are coming up in the next couple weeks. Uh, we're part of an organization that called the C1 Network that encourages spiritual growth with leaders, and they're having a seminar on women flourishing in ministry. That's on July 19th. There's a website here in your bulletin. If you want to track with that at c1network.org, and there'll be a link there. Yep. Oh, it's been moved. Scratch that. It's been moved to later in the month. So, and there is some details here about a uh, uh, a trip to the Creation Museum with some of our other churches in Indiana. The details are in there. You can talk to Skylar about some of that. She's helping to coordinate that for our church. I don't believe she's here today with the holiday, but um, if you're interested, let me know, and I will get you her phone number. So, that is all the announcements I had for today. I was just thinking about. Um, the weather on how, remember just a couple days ago, how dry it looked, how bleak it looked. And I go, wow, I don't remember. We just, we just started July, and now the Lord has brought a day and a half of rain. And boy, the Lord can change things in just a day, just a day, and things are starting to turn green again. So we're learning to follow him in this series together in ways we can give ourselves to other people. And Greg's going to continue with that when he comes up. Uh, with our next part of our series on listening. Oh, oh, one more reminder. If you want to make an offering, reminder, we're not doing that. There is a box at the back behind the stained, or in front of the stained glass window. Thank you. Good morning. How's that, John? Make sure I have it on. I do have it on. All right. Good morning. Thank you, music team and uh, announcement, the reading. I'm just going to start open with prayer. And let's bow our heads. Lord, we do lift up this time. We pray that you would give us the skills of listening and uh, what, how, what you want us to, to get out of this, uh, listening to others like you do to us. Lord, we ask that you'd give us even that skill today and um, make it part of our um, utility belt that we can be a better soldier for you. We ask this in your glorious name. Amen. So we're continuing this series on loving your neighbor the way Jesus w would, and this particular topic is on listening. So when we think about dynamic listening or listening hard, you know, it's hard to, I, I, it's hard to imagine listening very, like, listen harder. Use your, mus your ear muscles to listen. So how are we going to actually do that dynamically? Well, let's start with what happens if we don't listen, right? What happens... What happens when we don't listen? What, what are some ways that communication breaks down? 
when, uh, let's say you're on a team, you're trying to do, let's say, a puzzle or a, uh, you're, you're within your family or at work or wherever it might be, what are some things that cause communication to break down? Anyone? Assumptions. Assumptions, good. What else? You hear the wrong thing or you misunderstand what the other person's saying. What else? Not, you don't pay attention? What else? Assuming your ideas are the best, okay. Not sharing all the information, good. Any others? You put up defenses, you become offended, or something like that. That I didn't have all of those, those were all excellent ideas. There's lots and lots of different ways. These are the ones I came up with. Sometimes just lack of initiating. You don't communicate because you're not interested in communicating. You don't question uh, what you've received. You don't verify what you've understood. Um, you have, they have unknown expectations and there are details you don't know about. Particularly this can happen at, in, your, uh, in your office or in your work uh, um, or school. And there are details. You ever hear the term devils are in the details, right? Oh, I thought you meant this kind of orange, not peach. There's unclear delivery. We just don't uh, provide enough details. We don't uh, say it, or we use uh, maybe a, a lingo that a person doesn't understand. Use of improper delivery system, like we use email, where uh, ver verbal would be uh, useful, or text, or uh, maybe text would be okay. Uh, information overload, there's too much information being provided or uh, being heard. Uh, with, you withhold information, someone said that. Uh, one here that I run into a lot in my industry is fear. Um, calling up someone we don't know is very intimidating, particularly if it's in our business, it's a customer and we don't really want to interface with that person. We don't want to be a bother or we lack maybe lack confidence in our communication. So those are all good. So what's the result uh, of that? That leads to misunderstanding, which leads to conflict. And that conflict could take the form of lots of different things. So loss of relationship, war, particularly if that's between nations, uh, or war at home, <laughs> divorce, anger, hatred, violence, all sorts of negative things that might come out of miscommunication. And we've seen many examples of that. That's often a, a theme within a situational comedy, right? They, someone misunderstands uh, one particular thing and then they break that to the whole theme of the, that particular episode. What, is, what does Jesus say about that? What are some verses that we can look at? And this is from the NIV. Uh, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be a quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. And in the, uh, just to shorten it a little, ESV says it like this, uh, quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. And so we're going to look at each one of those things. What does it mean to be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger? And we're going to, in fact, particularly this first one is practice how to be quick to hear. So there are tons and tons of verses on communication, uh, and, I'm, and we're going to go through every one of them. No, we're not going to go through every one of them. There is so much to share on that. We're just going to touch on a few, but we're going to practice on a few. So um, Dean is going to review communicating and how to speak properly in more detail next week and do, do an excellent job of that. Hey, there's a plug. And so uh, I want to focus on this idea of not speaking and listening to understand in combination with control of our emotions so that we are in control of the mutual outcome to mutually benefit yourself and those you are attempting to communicate with. I'm going to say it again, what I want to focus on today. Just, I don't want to talk about speaking, but listening, dynamically listening to understand, listening to understand 
in combination with the control of our emotions so that we are in control of the mutual outcome of, to mutually benefit yourself and those you are attempting to communicate with. We will use this verse, James, and teach some really good listening tools as well. And so what am I attempting to do today? So, you know Batman, right? Maybe that's your favorite character. You know the Batman of today. This is the Batman of yesteryear. Um, and uh, this is the Batman I grew up with, which, which was kind of a parody, a, a cylinder. So what, was, what did he have around his waist? Belt. Utility belt, right? That was so that when he was being lowered slowly into a giant vat of boiling jello, he would get out because he had a bat anti-jello thing in, in, in here. Like, that's where this was. There was like a bat, whatever it is, bat, uh, whatever they needed to be able to get through it. Anti, uh, the funny one, ant, bat anti-shark or shark repellent, you know, whatever it was that he needed, he happened to have. And, uh, and in a sense, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to give, put on your utility belt, we all have skills, we all have resources that we pull from. Those are things that we've learned over time. Well, this is going to add a little bit about that and encourage you to get more things that you can pull out so that you can escape when you're in the giant vat of jello. And a difficult conversation. Or someone you haven't met before. Or need to engage someone in listening and understanding and uh, work on, specifically, communication. This is, this is what uh, people that are in leadership do. They have to be good at this. So we're, we're going to learn this type of, uh, this, this skill. We're going to learn that skill today, today, just a little one. So quick to hear. So if one gets an answer before he hears, it is his, to his folly and shame. So in... In uh, high school ministry, when we used to have that in the basement, we did a series where we reviewed well over 30 religions, different religions, uh, from Hinduism to Mus uh, Islam to vampirism and some isms that you've never heard of. And we would ask always, uh, and we'd ask uh, six questions of that religion, and then we re asked how would we engage a person in that to share, to listen, to understand their religion, and but also give them a path, give them an opportunity, connect the, help them connect the dots to Christ. And so in every case, we would say, listen to where they are really at. So one of the things um, I discovered, I got to share with uh, Eve last week, uh, a coworker that's Hindu, and, you know, and to be honest, he started it. So um, he... Uh, mentioned uh, his guru and the Pope in one sentence, and so I said, okay, uh, here's, here's what the difference between various, here's different, uh, you know, we talked about the differences between Christianity and Hinduism, and it was very good, and I asked him a lot of questions and learned a lot about uh, where he was at. One of the things we both agreed was that most people don't understand their own religion, and uh, nor do they understand others. And so the way to help lead, connect that dot, so it gave him an opportunity to share Christ with him in a very easy way, was just ask a lot of questions so we could draw parallels. And that's something I encourage you to do, is just listen to where the person's really at, because sometimes we have presumptions about if someone says, well, I'm Islamic, or I'm this, or I'm that, well, they may, may or may not be. You know, they may not understand what those are, or they're Christian, or whatever, and uh, we need to ask a lot of questions so we can understand how to reply. Or basically, how to, how to, first we need to understand or that we might reply. So we cannot understand how to reply if we don't understand them both technically and emotionally. And that's something I want you to really hear that. You need to listen to both parts of a person, at least. So, what I'd like you to do is, here's some more interaction here. Give me examples, if you guys can think of it, examples where, peop, where Jesus listened to somebody, really stopped and listened to them. Just 
any story that you can think of. Nicodemus, okay. Mary and Martha, who we just read. Thank you. The woman at the well. Thank you, Jim. I have that one. Who else? Who's in the picture? Did someone say children? Yep, children. He said, let the little children come unto me. We assume he listened to them. His father. Yep, the Pharisees. Okay, those are all good. I didn't catch, do all of those. I, these are just ones I kind of, he listened to a lot of people. <laughs> so, woman at the well, the children, woman who was healed of her bleeding. She gave her whole story and he listened to her. Sometimes he did, they don't describe everything she, that person says, but there's clearly that the centurion, the demoniac, even the demoniac, listened to the story, the blind man and Syrophoenician woman. Those are, and some of the ones that you guys mentioned were also very, very good. Listen to a lot, listen to a lot, a lot of people. So what do, why do we listen? Why do we engage with people? Often, and this is where uh, the conflict comes, we begin to listen to, to get ready to shoot our arrow, to fire back, typically. If it's just technical information, that's one thing. But if it's emotional information, we're getting ready to, so that we can come up with our snappy comeback or our, you know, how we're smarter or here's the six, you know, six other facts that we know about. We should listen to understand, but often we listen to reply. So listen to understand, because then you can engage on both, a, uh, on two levels. So in my business, I know that other businesses do that, particularly in const either if it's in construction or in business, or particularly if you're at a, any kind of facility, you need three-way communication because you need to communicate technical information, and particularly if it's a noisy area. So if you need, and you're often, when we, we talk to each other, there's two portions to what we're communicating. Some is technical and some is, some is emotional. For technical, um, you'll see different tools to do that. You'll hear, see uh, um, using the phonetic al you know, alphabet, they'll say, hey, I need you to start, you know, Alpha pump uh, one seven Charlie. Understood. You want me to start pump one, one alpha or alpha one seven Charlie. That is correct. That's so. Person said it. The uh, receiver reflected back or gave it back to make sure it was understood. They use phonetic alphabet so that they make sure that they're understood, right? So that's technical information. We typically don't talk like that at home, right? You know, hey, Greg, I want you to go get, you know, milk, eggs, butter, and bacon. Understood, wife. I, you want me to get milk, butter, eggs, and bacon. You gotta remember, that's why, that's why we do that because I can't remember it all. But that's all technical information. We just repeat back information. And usually, there's not conflict over that. It's like either it was received or it wasn't, and we understand or we didn't. But what if we don't understand the emotional? And this is a part that often is missed, is the, the stuff that usually gets broken down is, or, or missed behind, is what's behind. Hey, I'm feeling like you always cut me off right when I'm about to say something important. So there's several responses to that is, well, you should just talk faster so you get it back out quicker. Or, no, I don't. Or, well, maybe we just shouldn't talk because it caused pain. Or, wow, 
I didn't re sounds like you're really frustrated by our communication or you feel like you're not being heard. Yes, and that sounds frustrating or that makes you angry or it feels you feel hurt. So do you see what I, in the, in the last example, I pr repeated back what emotion was being expressed. It may not have to be the exact same word because emotions are fluid, right? So with whatever it is, and if person doesn't mind if you get it wrong, well, it sounds like you're feeling, you know, slightly perturbed about not being heard on the important point. Well, no, it's stronger than that. It's, it's I'm feeling angry or I feel frustrated. Person will correct you, but you're trying to understand. At least you're trying to understand, and then they'll, they feel like, oh, yeah, the door is open. This person's trying to listen to me on all these levels. So even you can, you can use this in many, many different ways. Let's say even at, you know, you know at work, I, we, you know, if a customer is saying, I really, if I hear the, the key word feel, I really feel like you guys aren't being responsive and that's uh, become what somewhat of a, a frustration. Wow, sounds like uh, you, would like to us, you would like us to be more engaged in with you on these specific issues and because it's so uh, frustrating does that sound right and he's yeah that's that's right or but and even more here's yeah I think you got it and when you deal not with the tech just the technical but the emotional as well people are more likely to engage with you because they know they're being received in a wholehearted way in a wholehearted way so we're gonna uh, so you repeat back not just the information, but the desire or the emotion. That is so important in communication, in listening, in li listening, being quick to listen. Being, uh, as, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Arnold, if Arnold Schwarzenegger would say, listen harder, you're, you're engaging and you're listening. So when you're, you're reflecting back what you've heard, so that it, it's under your, their feel understood. It's so important in communication. Even, you may, don't ha you're not saying you agree with them, but you understand. The, and the more you understand about another person, the more likely you're going to be able to communicate with them. Whenever you're listening to someone, how, have you ever talked to someone, they're like hardly looking at you, or they're, looking off to the side and said, oh yeah, that's your thoughts and emotions are really important to me. Ugh. I'm sorry, what would you say again? Does that, that doesn't feel like you're engaging. Maintain your eye contact with the person. It can feel uncomfortable, but they'll feel listened to. Have an engaging stance. So in this uh, picture, even though it's an, uh, a cartoon, it's they're facing one another and they're uh, open and they're not, you know, you know, oh man, I hope I just live through this conversation, you know, uh, or looking away or be sincere and genuine in your stance and in your communication, in your facial expression, everything that shows you're engaged with listening to that person. And then if, be a master of questions. If you want to understand, uh, and I've said this many, many times before, be a master at asking the right questions. So if you don't understand a particular about what the person feels, well, it's, it sounds like you're feeling angry. Is that right? Or can you tell me a little bit more about what you are angry about? Or I don't understand that. I, I'm still not sure when you say I cut you off, can you elaborate or give me some examples? So those types of questions help show the person you're wanting to understand. And when you f feel, even when you know it's being done to you, this reflective listening, you're excited because someone's trying to understand you and get a better picture and open up the doors of communication. So we listen to understand. That's what Jesus was doing. He's listening to the people to understand them. And he did understand them. So we're going to do a little exercise. We're going to, and this will be the only one, just because of time's sake. And uh, I need you, remember how we were, we got up 
because, and I know you love to do this because we just did it earlier, but I would like you to go find one other person that is not, you're not related to. And even better if you don't know them very well. Because you need to find out what hometown they were born in and what they think about, what they feel about that hometown. So that's two things. What hometown, which is easy, what they feel about it, what hobby they like to do, and why they like it. So do you see what I'm doing here? Technical information, hobby, why they like it, ah, emotional, why they do the hobby. The best or worst thing, you could do both, but just one of these two. Best or worst thing that happened this week and how it made them feel. So I'm going to give you four minutes to do that. Two minutes. You have two minutes to find out this about the other person, and then we'll swap. So two minutes. I'll give you one minute to find another person. So why don't you get up and start meeting with each other. If you have any questions, you can come see me. You got nobody? Uh, the other fellow, Andrew, walked out. Oh, maybe that's where she's going. Yep. All right, what did this, uh, 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 hometown, what are your feelings about it? What is it, what are your feelings about it? <laughs> uh, my home, hometown? So you can find out how this exercise actually goes. Yeah, really. Yeah. Um, so, well, my, the town I was born in was Glen Cove, New York. Glen Cove. New York City. So, New York City? Yep. Okay. Well, it's a suburb of New York. Okay. How do you feel about it? Um, not, not much. I, I mean, I like it. It's a How nice town. There? Not very long. Three years. I don't know if that really counts. Where'd you live after that? Um, Seven Hills, Ohio. Right, well, How do you feel about Seven Hills, Ohio? Um, I think I felt, I feel a, a, a sense of uh, loss because that was kind of a growing up child event. Huh. Uh, what was the hobby? Rocketry. Huh? Rocketry. Oh. And, and I like it because uh, you, it, it is detail oriented and um, you get to see something that you've built, um, you know, fly, actually fly, and there's risk of losing it. Hmm. It's from, I mean, it's kind of detail-oriented, it seems like. It's just like the most detail-oriented, because in a way, you know, it's like, you got the rocket, you got to make money, it's like, Well, the, <laughs> the complex rocket, because there's the easy ones, you're right, but the, there's some that are very complicated to build. They, well, yeah, you're right. They, they blew up all the time when they were right. trying to build these things right. initially, so I'm sure it is very good. I mean, it's funny. It's one of those things that you think the detail oriented is probably right. Mm -hmm. It's not like there's that many parts, but mm -hmm. the parts you got, you better get it right. Yeah. Uh, and what was the best or worst thing that happened? Best thing was John came home for the weekend. Oh, and why, was, why, why was that good? Because I hadn't seen my son for a month. And, it was nice to see him, you know, even though he's been gone for a while. In India. Where is he? He's uh, somewhere here. He was sitting with us. Well, I thought that was Eric. No, er they're both here. Eric's in the back, and Gen oh. Eric and Janelle are back there. Uh, I don't see... Uh... He's here somewhere. 
Maybe I imagined it. Oh, he's, he's no, that's not. By the way, did he skip the church greeting today in order to no. do this? No. No. Oh, it seemed like there wasn't that many songs. No, there were four songs. So they were just shorter. It must have been. Because, yeah. Like song 55 is short. I mean, we were late, but normally mm-hmm. the music is still going when we get in. We were past the reading. Was there a reading today? Yes. Did we start early? <laughs> no, we started right on time. Faster, which is good. Well, yeah, sometimes Chris is uh, Chris has longer melancholy songs, and those can take up to a half hour, so that's why sometimes it's longer. Yeah, uh, anyway. All right, so how'd you, how'd you do you feel like um, you understood more about those things about me? Um. <laughs> and how did that make you feel? Um, uh, I'm wondering why we're not getting to my part. <laughs> What's your part? Oh! That, <laughs> I because I know about. these things already. You want me to... Okay. Um, you, know, you know my hometown? Yeah, what is... All right, everybody, I let you go over long. Let's go ahead and take a seat. Let's take a seat. Dean, let's take a seat. Everybody. All right, I'm going to ask some questions. How did you guys like that? How did you feel about that? My wife says good, so I won. What's that? <laughs> I failed. Um, let me ask a different question. Did you feel listened to? Yes. Okay. Um, and did you feel understood? Yes. Okay. 
do you feel like you understood the information and emotion of what the other person was saying? Yeah. Okay. Did it help to reflect that back to the person? Okay. Any other, anything else that you guys want to share about that experience? Got to know somebody. Did you feel like you got to know them um, deeper than you might normally? Yeah. Okay. All right, good. Well, that was, that's something go and do in real life. <laughs> that's something you can continue to do. That's a little skill, and uh, I'll give you some more further reading after, at the end of this. Um, that's, that's important. So, um, all of these things, in our, and I, I, forgot, I realized I didn't go through the, uh, um, all these things, but um, these, are, again, when you practice this with other people, think about that, reflect that back. And particularly, with, you can even do this with your children or teenagers and so on. Oops. Let me make sure I don't get ahead of myself. All right. Well, we're going to go with slow to speak. So we're going to get started on this next section, which is slow to speak. So we heard quick to hear, which was really the main thing we want to look at, but also slow to speak. So since we're working on listening, uh, sometimes we're waiting, we're waiting, as we talked about earlier, waiting to give our reply and blurt something out very quickly. And so being slow to speak is to withhold, it's kind of like playing cards. And uh, I don't know about you, but when I play various cards, I tend to withhold my high cards to the end, right? You tend to, uh, let's say, Euchre, yeah, Euchre is one of those games where you wait to the moment and then you yeah, you know, you blow up the game. Sit, you, you save your best cards for the end. And the idea here is that you're, you may not want to use them. You're, you're withholding things for the right moment to be observant that about what's really going on and what the answer is. So, um, um, let's see, if, make sure I'm at the right spot. Nope. So, let's see. Wow. Somehow this got way ahead. Okay. Proverbs 21, 23. Whoever keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps himself out of trouble. In 10, 19, when words are many, transgression is not lacking, but whoever restrains his lips is prudent. So these all talk about withholding, waiting, waiting a little bit before you say anything. If you're talking to young adults or teens, I strongly recommend you get this skill. Um, if you're a parent, or you can be very frustrated because they'll often blurt out something you don't agree with right away, with, and, you're, or, and strongly because you care about them and you don't want them to go down the wrong path. So we're concerned for their well-being, and we want to say something with all our heart. We want to say, okay, no, you shouldn't drive your, your new car off a cliff, right? Say, okay, let's just talk about that. <laughs> In many ways, we're trying lots, they're trying lots of waters, and listening and being understood is the most important thing that they need, and everyone needs. We want to be the last to speak. You know, uh, this is a technique in business that is, is taught in uh, things like crucial conversations. There's other various other uh, media out there talking about, and you wait till the end. And my dad does this very well. Um, and he used to do this when I was younger, and it used to drive me crazy. Because he would sit there and, you know, this everyone's talking, and then he, he wouldn't say anything, and then, then there was silence, and you knew he was going to say something, but it go on for like 30 seconds, and you're sitting there going, I think he's going to say something, but I don't know what it is, but I'm sure it's going to be a bombshell. And it just drove me crazy, and one time I asked him, I mean, why do you do that? It just, and it's, since then, has been somewhat of a characteristic I've picked up. It just says, you, because you want to make sure you're, what you're saying is, is right, and then also it adds more, more weight because it's it's everything has been been looked at everybody now understands where you're at there's examples where jesus waits uh to say something can you guys think of examples where jesus kind of withheld his tongue for a little bit 
and then he dropped the bomb. Right? Yep. That was one I was thinking of. Exactly. One caught in adultery, the angry mob. There are two others I was thinking of. His trial at, before Pilate. Okay. And I thought I saw Nathan. Did you raise your hand? Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just put them out here. That was the angry mob and the adulterous woman. And he with... He withheld, he waited, what was he doing? He was drawing in the sand, I don't know he was, he, but he was listening to what everybody was saying. And then, of course, what's the bombshell? He who has, was without sin uh, cast the first stone, and uh, he, he nuked him, right? Another was bef before, before the Sanhedrin, right? They were accusing him of, so he had been arrested. And they're, now they're starting to throw accusations at him. And he waited to the very end. Uh, you know, basically, are you the son of God? And yeah. Same thing with Pilate. He was, was silent. He was, he was waiting. Now, I don't think it was in the same, necessarily in the same way, but it wasn't engaging before all this craziness. Just letting it settle before he came in. So withholding... And you can think about this in, in meetings even, withholding the answer to the end, not being quick to speak, but slow to speak, is uh, um, very, can be uh, a very, very strong technique to make sure you're understood, but also that you've heard what every, where everybody is really at so you can give the proper answer. That's, this is another item on your utility belt. So what does that do for you? It makes sure you understand what is really going on. And you look like you're smart. <laughs> because Rather than jumping in the middle, saying all these things in the middle where everybody else is at, you'll be lost. Deliver a decisive and persuasive dialogue and truth. You know, make sure that you're, you're uh, even Jim and I were talking about, making sure that we understand what, everything we can about what's happening before us, and particularly in large groups. And you're better... It's better for overall communication and conflict resolution. So those are the kinds of, uh, that's another, uh, um, um, again, little um, technique or tool on your utility belt that I would uh, put on there so you can pull it out at the right time. Last item is slow to anger. And we all get angry sometimes for good reasons and sometimes not so good. You know, we know the difference primarily based on what the result ends up being. So, where do we see Jesus get angry? What was that? At the temple where he's overturning the, the tables, the vendors' tables, right? I was thinking of three others. At the Pharisees? At the Pharisees, yep. Two others I was thinking of. James, John, the disciples? Yeah, basically, any time the disciples speak. <laughs> Get, yeah, that's the one specific that I'm thinking of. And there's one more, this is a little harder, but uh, Satan himself. Uh, not necessarily angry, but rebukes, he rebukes Satan. So these were, and there might be others that I, I didn't catch, but these are just examples of where he does get angry, and they, for good reason. Um, but, and where do we see him get slow to anger? And I would say it's just about all these other examples that we gave, just about everywhere else. The point we want to with is we want to withhold our anger for the proper times and not have it come out when we or someone else is not ready. Here are some other, there are some other verses that we can glean from this, and there are a ton of them, like in all over Proverbs and and in various locations, but I'm just going to share a few of them with you. So, whoever's slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who walks in a city, Proverbs 16.32. If we want to be effective in our private and public relationships, then we need to control our outbursts, our outbursts when we speak. In fact, you command a conversation by being silent and speaking when we're ready. 
this verse that we were just looking at that's part of our uh, talk today ends with, so in verse 20, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So, um, so that um, our uncontrolled anger is not what God wants. Slow to anger because we want to be sure it is in line with what God is doing. God gets angry too, but we want to make sure it's at the proper time. You can reprove, rebuke, overturn tables if you'd like, um, to, like Jesus did. Uh, I wouldn't recommend you do it at you know, a farmer's market, but uh, just like Jesus, but it's for his glory and not ours. Another verse, whoever is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who has a hasty temper exalts folly. So, and this is a difference, hasty, um, anger gives us the feeling of power. Our righting a wrong, which is usually, that's usually the source of our anger, injustice. And when we become judge and jury in a conversation, you want to be sure, you want to be sure, you want to be sure you are right. And one thing, otherwise one thing leads to another, because then they'll feel wrong. It can escalate because, and I've seen it happen all the time, you know, where it just gets out of control because each person feels like it's unjust, and that's where the conflict comes from. Maybe more anger, they may become uh, more angry because of it's unjust. So that's what we want to look at. This fi final verse, Ephesians 4:26, be angry, very, very common. Be angry, do not sin. Do let the sun go down in your anger. I'm going to close with this. We want to be slow to anger because there's a time limit. There's a time limit. Anger can become a permanent resident that lasts for years. It is very likely, you right now, it is very likely that you're angry at someone or something, including yourself or even God, for a variety of reasons. That will come out. It will come out and could reveal itself in attacks on other people you love or you don't mean to hurt. And we've seen that before. If you're angry with someone, resolve it quickly, or else it will take up permanent residence in your heart to come out later. Anger usually stands in front of our hurts because it gives its strength. It, it gives a perception of strength to protect the hurt that we feel because of the injustice and it can be vicious. We have a prayer ministry here that can ask, you can ask me about afterwards, called Transformational Prayer, that can identify and resolve these types of angers and uh, can bring them before Jesus and um, when you're ready. And, uh, um, um, and if you already, uh, I'm sorry, Jesus can help you with that specifically in that ministry. Other resources I want to just let you know about. These are ones I often share. These talk about these types of things, and they're all in this type of book. One is Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. This is a secular book, but it has the same <laughs> principles in it. Uh, I don't know if he stole them from the Bible, but he, he's definitely using them. Uh, Listening for Heaven's Sake, I've met the, one of the authors, Dave Ping, um, just this year. I, I, I've talked with him. Uh, and boy, for a guy that wrote a book on listening, he talks a lot. <laughs> He's just wow. And uh, great guy. I really enjoyed uh, getting to know him. And then getting to yes, this is about negotiation, but it's negotiation that is a win win, trying to get a, to a win win. And it talks about listening and uh, balance and so on. So these are great resources to add to your util utility belt. So, one thing I would encourage you. Um, and I apologize, I've definitely gone over, but one thing I encourage you is to build your utility belt. So it's not just one, one talk about listening is going to, now you're the best listeners in the world. This is something you need to practice and learn more about in order to be ready so you can go out and, you know, and be a part of these types of conversation where you're really listening to where people are at technically but also emotionally. So. This is what we covered, being quick to hear, and the music team can come up as I'm, I'm starting to close. Quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. And uh, this is what we reviewed at. And so add these things to your utility belt. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for what you 
have done. How, help us to be b- better at uh, being quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger, Lord, and add these tools to how we can be a better ambassador for you in our relationships at home, relationships at work or school, or wherever we meet people, Lord, that you would uh, help us to be better listeners. Help us even practice these things uh, this week as uh, we engage uh, with the world. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Greg. Um, just ask that everybody stand up. We'll close out with a couple more songs.
sing for joy to God our strength. Oh, sing for joy to God our strength. Our strength.